fellow teachers, as a science teacher, when you teach in your class, when you facilitate your students in learning of different concepts, theories, principles of science, how do you know that what they have learned? What are the methods, tools, strategies, and techniques which you use to know that how much your students have learned? How can they improve in their learning if there is any deficiency or something need to learn more? Definitely, you use different types of tools. The tools which you use to assess the performance of learners, not only to know how much they have learned, but also to facilitate how they can learn better. To discuss about all these tools and techniques, I am with you, your course instructor, Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education, Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. And today I am going to discuss with you about different types of assessment tools in science. As a teacher, when you assess your learners to facilitate in their teaching learning in your class, in your science class, your focus is more on assessment for learning. In recent times, there is basically a fundamental shift from assessment of learning to assessment for learning. In assessment of learning, we generally assess our learners to know how much they have learned after completion of a unit, after completion of a lesson, or after completion of a semester or a term. But when we talk about assessment for learning, assessment is perceived as integral part of teaching learning process. We may use different types of techniques to assess our learners when we are assessing to know that what they have learned, what they have not learned, what they need to learn more or they need to learn again means when we assess them to facilitate in their learning, we use different types of tools like role plays, crossword puzzles, flow charts, popular science book reviews, field trips, classwork, or sometimes homework assignments, group work, surveys, project work, worksheet, games, and many such tools, many such techniques we use to know how much they have learned and how they can learn better. Actually, when we assess our learners, we assess generally them in two ways. One is known as formative assessment and another is known as summative assessment. When we talk about formative assessment, formative assessment means the assessment which we do generally while teaching, while facilitating their learning, means during the instructional process. The objective of formative is basically to know that how much mastery a learner have earned on a particular content in a subject. Whereas Summative assessment generally takes place after the instructional process and it is being used to certify the learners that yes, they have achieved a particular level, now they are ready to move from one level to another. When we talk about different tools and techniques which can be used in a science classroom, we get a whole list. If you read the documents, if you read the handbooks for the teachers, if you read the study material, you will find there are many tools like questionnaire, observation schedule, interview schedule, checklist, rating scale, anecdotal records, document analysis, test and inventories, or portfolio analysis. These are different tools which can be used for assessing our learners. What are the techniques? Techniques are examination, assignments, quizzes and competitions, projects, debates, allocution, group discussions, action plans, experiments, worksheets, seminars, symposium, survey, and many things. Now you may confuse that why questionnaire is a tool and why examination is a technique. Examination is a technique where we use different types of tools. We can use a questionnaire to examine our students. We can give them a checklist. We can give them a rating scale. We can examine our students by observing their performance. 
we can assess our learners by analyzing their documents so their documents are tools not technique group discussions is a technique but what kind of group discussion you are organizing so the essence of the discussion is that there are different tools and techniques which can be used to analyze our learners performance in science classroom in this discussion i'm not going to discuss all techniques in details but i would like to discuss about certain techniques which you can use in your class and which have been suggested by different documents produced by cpsc or ncert for science teachers specifically let us take the example of debate debate basically provides an opportunity to children to communicate their viewpoint about any issue with logical arguments debate is a useful tool for development of collective collaborative and cooperative learning environment if we organize debate in our class it motivates to our children to search collect arrange share and discuss new information related to any issue which you are discussing in your classroom debate also provides an opportunity to our learners for the healthy competition among themselves and they sharpen their skills to evaluate the problem or the issue from two different set of opinions many higher order thinking skills communication skill critical analysis skill all these skill improved through such activities in the classroom now the question is that if you want to organize a debate or debates in your classroom how can you plan and how can you organize debates in your classroom for organizing any debate the first step is selection of a topic on which topic you want to organize a debate then when you have a general topic in your mind you identify the specific topics or specific concepts or specific issues to be deliberated by the learners during the discussion so you specify the topic in your class then you assign the role to the learners in your class you can make them two groups you can make them more than two groups you can give them individual responsibility it is up to you after it you do some pre debate preparation when the debate will be organized what will be the format who will be the evaluator or assessor what will be the assessment criteria all these things you decide and you also design the expected learning outcomes that what is expected from the learners to be achieved through this debate and then you prepare an assessment table where you put certain criteria on which a debate is to be assessed how learning can be assessed through debate for example first step is planning for the debate what you do for that you select the specific role in the organization of the debate for the children you choose certain sub themes on which they will deliberate you assign specific task in the group for dealing with a particular sub theme then what you assess in this criteria you assess whether the learners are willing to participate in the organization of the event or not are learners contributing in selection of relevant sub themes and are they giving their consent when you are assigning the responsibility to all the members of the group the second indicator is organization of the facts or information means when they are presenting in the debate what are the specific indicators like from where they are collecting the information means what is the source of the information the information which they are collecting from various source whether it is relevant or not whether they have logically arranged all different sub themes what is the sequence of the information to be presented how do you assess you assess the knowledge of the relevant resources you assess the method which they adopt to select and screen relevant information you assess how they are taking decisions for sequencing the sub themes and how they are linking the previous sub theme with the next sub theme
So when you assess them on the indicators of presentation of the data, what are the indicators? The indicators are how they are introducing the sub-themes, what is the rationale behind their discussion, what are the issues or aspects they have raised in their presentation, how they have logically arranged their presentation, and what kind of supportive data, facts, or have been used by them to justify and verify their arguments and logic. What you assess? You assess the relevance of the background of the sub-theme. You assess how they have linked issues with the sub-theme. You also assess how they have contextualized the issue, how they are introducing a new information which is not commonly known to all. And you also assess their communication skill. This how they are expressing their views, what kind of confidence they have and clarity of ideas and thoughts, whether they are ready to accept the other's viewpoint or not, whether they are describing the important points in details, how you assess, use of vocabulary and command over language, the confidence and logics used by them. You also consider and countering others' views if they are countering it with delicacy, how they are including different finer details in their presentation. You also have an indicator like when they are debating, are they linking it with their daily life or not? How do you assess it? You frame certain indicators like whether they will cite certain examples from day-to-day -day life or not. Will they give any solution for everyday problem or the everyday observation? Will they give their examples on the basis of their life experiences and observations? And if they do so, how will you assess them? You will notice that what kind of examples they are giving. They can give examples from household wastage. They can give examples from the care which has been taken at the home. They can talk about certain small initiatives which are being discussed and which are being taken in their society. So these are some examples. What kind of values are being generated and what kind of attitude is being developed? What can be the indicator? Indicator can be many like if they have respect for others, are they cooperating in the group while dealing with a particular sub-theme? Are they cooperating in organizing the event? Are they showing a responsible attitude towards the task to be given to them? Are they avoiding wastage of material while preparing for the debate? Are they showing concern for the issue? Are they sensitive towards the issue which have been decided to organize a debate? Now, how will you assess? You will see that what, up to what extent they are considering others' view. What is the degree of cooperation between them? What kind of concentration and effectiveness is being shown by them on the task chosen and how they are cooperating with each other. So in this way, you can decide the indicators that what will be the indicators and what is to be assessed. If you frame such kind of rubrics or such kind of assessment tables, these basically help not only to the assessors, but also to the learners to learn that what they are expected to learn from this particular activity. The second very important tool which we used is rubrics. In many science classes, we use rubrics as a tool to interpret and grade a students' work against certain given, given criteria or standards. Sometimes rubrics is also known as criteria sheets, grading scheme, or scoring guide. So what are the common elements of assessment rubric? Any assessment rubric has certain common elements. The first one is a set of criteria. While designing any assessment rubric, a teacher provides an interpretation of the stated objectives, means what kind of performance they will show, if there will be any behavior, what kind of behavior will be that, what will be the quality. Then the next element in any assessment rubric is the range. Range means the level of performance between the highest and lowest. When you will rate them poor, when you will rate them average, when you will rate them require improvement, when you will rate them 
they are doing good when you will rate them they are doing excellent when you will rate them they are doing outstanding so you decide different labels of ranges then you give certain descriptors for every label or every range for a particular criteria so in on one side you have criteria on one side you have labels then for each criteria you write certain descriptors that description basically allow the assessor to interpret that which label has been met by the learners let us see uh, this example here the criteria are scientific concepts procedures and drawing diagrams the labels are 4 3 2 and 1 4 is outstanding 3 is good 2 is average and 1 is required improvement suppose a scientific concept has been explained in the laboratory and they need to perform the experiment what they will do if they are reporting the illustration in an accurate manner and the thorough understanding of the concepts which is being discussed in the lab has been written it means they have excellent exposure to that concept if they report the illustration accurately but they do not explain the understanding but they do not use the understanding their own understanding to explain that they use only the bookish language or the language which is very common then you give them three means they have understood the concept but they are not applying their own mind the report which has been written by the student illustrates a limited understanding not the complete one means only the required skills or required aspects have been covered then it may come two and they, if they re, are reporting inaccurately then it will come at one so you have written four descriptors for one criteria scientific concept next is procedure in the lab they need to do certain procedure so if they have listed the procedure with clear steps and each steps is numbered clearly in complete sentence in their report you give them four if they have listed the procedure in logical order but the steps are not numbered or not in complete sentence you give them three if they listed the procedure but not in a logical order or the order which is very difficult to follow you give them two but if they have not understood the procedure they have not written the procedure accurately they have not written all the steps of the process to be involved then you give them one so these are the descriptors for procedure similarly for drawing and diagram if they have drawn a clear accurate diagram with all markers diagram are labeled neatly and accurately then you give them four diagram is there it is labeled neatly and uh, accurately but the diagram may not be accurate or very clear that you can you can give them three diagram is there it is very poorly labeled or not labeled properly you give them two but if diagram is missing or diagram is there but labels are missing then you give them one so you decide when you will give them one when you will give them two when you will give them three so these are called rubrics similarly if they are handling any material or equipment in the lab so if all the material and the setup which is used in the experiment is clearly and accurately described you will give them four if they have listed all the material to be used or setup to be used but not as clearly then you can give them three they have included most of the material they have included most of the material and setup to be used but in haphazard manner you can give them three but if they have missed certain material or they have described the material inaccurately then you give them one so there can be criteria for everything in the lab you need to prepare such rubrics for your students when you are using rubric as an assessment tool in your classroom next can be activity based worksheets these are very common in the lab actually in activity based worksheet we try to identify the skill which is to be assessed then we design the activity associated with that skill or with those skills and then we prepare a checklist or assessment indicator for a particular skill we develop an assessment table 
for that activity which basically help you in assessing the child's performance and learning collectively let us see this example this example has been taken from ncert textbook of class 10th uh, there are two images in one image two boys are pushing a single box in one direction and in another image two boys are pushing the same box in opposite direction now see if this has been given then what kind of skills we will observe first we will observe the observation skill means are they observing the size of the box are they discussing about the possibility of moving of the box by one learner or by one student in one direction how will you assess whether they are taking any initiative yes or no whether they are framing any hypothesis about the possible movement of the box if they are framing it is a criteria similarly planning they may think who will move first who will help the second child in which direction the force will be applied so if these are the activities are your students willing to participate in the activity or not are they able to identify the proper direction to apply the force or not are they using the precision and estimation then reporting how will the process be narrated by the student to whole class and who will narrate so if students are explaining these pictures to the class are they communicating com are they communicating in the simple language the narration which they have given is being underst understood by the learners in your class whether they have included all the important facts and events of that narration communication and explanation the explanation which they are giving to certain questions like why a single person cannot move the vase Uh, box why did two, two children move it what happens when force was applied from opposite direction so if their explanation is satisfactory are they using the logic to explain it or not then comes the conclusion forces applied on an object in the same direction act to one another if two forces act in opposite direction to an object the net force is acting on it is the difference between the two forces so these are some specific learning indicators which you have decided are they able to arrive at a conclusion are their conclusion complete is anyone giving any extra explanation in your class to this activity now are they able to show you certain applications of this concept are they giving examples like a game of tug of war or fixing of a lamp post on road side and using the rope to keep it straight up tugging of the tank tent rope these are few examples which are from life from daily life are your students giving these examples if yes then they are achieving a particular level similarly in science classes we generally use many times diagram based worksheet especially in sciences uh, especially in physics and biology sometimes in chemistry also so what we can do we can give them a figure and we can say that okay you study the figure given below on the inter conversation of the state of the matter carefully and answer the questions that follow so you first give them an example like this example has been taken from a cbse handbook and on the basis of this example certain questions have been framed like they may be asked to name the processes marked as a b c d e and f in the picture the questions they may be asked questions like to which state of the matter a liquid changes on increasing its temperature what change do we expect on increasing pressure or lowering the temperature of a gas when a liquid is cooled it may change into a new state of matter what will be that what is the process of sublimation so you can give them a diagram half label diagram diagram without any labeling or sometimes the label diagram by missing certain terms and you can frame certain questions to do that so this is also a good worksheet then nowadays we generally use crossword puzzles in our science classroom especially when we end any topic this example i have again taken from the cbsc handbook so if you see this example there are some words which are written across and there are some words which are written top to bottom if you again see is there are numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9. now these are the indicators that if we, they need to fill the name at number 2 it is the name of the scientist who discovered the neutrons and the number of letter to be involved 8 point 8 atoms with the same number of the proton but different number of the neutrons negatively charged particle of an atom the central part of an atom so these are the indicators 
which basically help students to fill the crossword puzzle. And the numbers in the bracket are showing the number of letters in the spelling. You may give them, you may not give them. This is your choice. Similarly, here you can see that in down, scientists who discovered the element are present in the atom in discrete orbits K, L, M, and N. Then the neutral particles in a nucleus of an atom. The name of the scientist who discovered the nucleus. Number of the electrons in outermost shell of the oxygen. So you can see that you can give certain hints for across or certain hints for the down. And this you can create very easily by using any uh, Microsoft application like Microsoft Excel or uh, Word on a white paper and you can give it to your learners. So my point is that when you teach in a science classroom, you teach different types of concepts, different type of theories, facts, principles, and you cannot assess everything by using a single type of tool. Most of the time we use unit test, objective type test, multiple choice questions, but in a science classroom, to assess the level of learning of different learners, we should use different types of assessment tools. I have discussed here about debate, about rubrics, about crossword puzzle, and about pictorial diagrams. These are the few examples. If you go through the literature, if you go through the handbooks which have been suggested by NCRT and CBSC, you will find number of tools which you can use to assess the scholastic achievement of your learners in your science class. So dear teachers, my suggestion would be that when you are teaching science in your classroom, when you are dealing with different concepts and subconcepts, you try to assess them by using different types of tools. Don't assess every concept, every principle, every theory by using a single type of tool or a single type of technique. There are multiple tools. You identify which suits best to the concept, to the learner, to the situation and choose this so that we can facilitate learning for our learners. So dear teachers, let's facilitate learning.